Hello sippers, welcome to this week's Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd, Big Mike just fiddling knobs there as per. This week on the podcast, I'm interviewing Stephen Watson. You will know Stephen Watson from BBC Sport. He covers football, cycling, rugby. If there's a sport, you can't see it because he's got it covered. Stephen is uh, someone who has had a kidney transplant last year, his second ever kidney transplant. I don't know anything about kidney transplants, so I'm going to speak to him about transplantation. And I don't know if that is the word that sort of covers transplants, transplantation, but I think it does. Mike, Big Mike, do you think it does? Uh, trans, transponsting. Transponsting. You know, it's it's one of those things anyway, although I think transponting is uh, the capital of Bulgaria. But hey, it's all good. We're going to chat about that. We chatted about ice lollies. Big. Ex- if you want showbiz exclusives... We got it. Yeah, you also know I, I do an impression of Stephen Watson. Okay, and is it disrespectful? Potentially. Potentially. But he's a great sport. So when I say, Stephen Watson here, live at Windsor Park, Lintoran 3, Linfield 1, you know it's all good because he thinks it's funny. And maybe he doesn't, but he does a good job of looking like he finds it vaguely funny. We also talk about the Smiths. And Morrissey and his love for all things that he does. Um, and we talk about Mar- Morrissey's really weird leisure centre tour of Northern Ireland that he did a couple of years ago, which I didn't think was a real thing. And then I found that it kind of, it, it actually is a thing. And I didn't say this on the podcast, but my lips are sore. I've got cracked lips and I don't know why. Um, maybe because it's getting cold and it was cold this morning. And maybe that's why it is, but I don't like it. I hate it. And I put um, Carmex on and it makes worse. So I don't know what to do. Don't put it on, have crack lips, put it on, and they look better, but it is sore. And I've got cuts. I just want to say this. I've got cuts all over my body. I burnt I burnt my thumb on the iron. I did that. Okay. It's the weirdest shape ever. It's a, what do you mean it's the weirdest shape ever? How do you show someone the back of your thumb? <laughs> Alright, I got that. That's what it is. Okay? But I still did the podcast despite that. I've got a cut on my leg from football. And I think I've got to cut somewhere else. So I'm cut up, but I'm still here for you guys. I'm still doing the podcast. It's Tea With Me. It's a Stephen Watson episode. We're talking about organs, okay? We're talking about organs. We're talking about his journey um, through getting a new kidney, what that means health-wise, what it was like to, to receive that, and the work that he's doing to sort of provide more awareness about organ transplantation so check that out also just before we start the podcast if you would like to do me a big favor you could rate and review tea with me on apple Podcasts. you could give it a wee five star review and say something really nice that would be great and that goes a long way and i i sure would appreciate that but in the meantime just keep listening you want to see the video version of this on youtube just type tea with me or go on my channel she and todd and the audio version is available anywhere you get your podcast just search tea with me this is the Tea With Me episode with Stephen Watson. Stephen, you're my second ever guest on the podcast. Delighted. I, I felt embarrassed bringing you up to the office because we've got a little bit of a fly tipping <laughs> situation outside, but we're inside now and we're all good. It's nice and cosy. It's comfy. We've got tea. It's good. Let me speak to you about tea, first of all. Do you drink tea often? Are you like big into tea? Or are you a casual drinker? There's no judgments here. Massive tea drinker. Drink tea all the time. <laughs> so it's like maybe two <laughs> many cups a day. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Oh, at least eight to ten cups of tea a day. Being serious? Yes. Now, recently, I've moved on to the hot chocolate because it's because of my slope. because of my medical situation, <laughs> I wasn't able to to uh, eat or drink chocolate for about three and a half years. So right. now that it's open to me, yes, flat out on the hot chocolate. So you still on the eight to ten teas and hot chocolate? No, or? no, probably probably eight to ten hot chocolate, the, but no coffee anymore. Right, gone right off coffee. Right. Used to be a big latte drinker, but uh, not anymore. See, I'm the opposite. I I've always been tea, like like complete purist for for the tea. English breakfast or yeah, herbals as English well. English breakfast. Yeah, I I drink a bit of lemon and ginger tea too sometimes. So, sometimes one of the worst things about going to the states is sometimes you ask for even if you ask for a breakfast tea, rotten. You get Earl Grey. Yeah, it's rotten. Which is just like a bath. You tried Earl Grey with milk in it. Uh, yeah, it's like a bath. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I was in um, New York a couple of weeks ago. I ordered a. English breakfast tea. I could, 
you know when you're ordering and you know they're going to get it wrong? <laughs> you just, I could tell by her face. And um, I ordered English breakfast tea with almond milk. Took one sip of it at the counter. Earl Grey. Just left it and walked out. Yeah, I would, I would, do, I would do the same. Take Didn't your own tea really bags fun. with you. That's the, that's the key. And then here's the other thing. I was in, maybe it was Chicago, a couple of months ago. And I ordered a breakfast tea. And the guy wouldn't give me it for a couple of minutes. He goes, we've got a three second brew here. <laughs> I was like, mate, you're making me a tea right now. <laughs> so eight to ten, do you think you drink more tea just because you work in TV? You're used to sort of just being offered tea in between breaks and stuff like that? Possibly. Possibly, yes. And if you're out meeting people, um, you have to sit and, oh, what do you want? I'll have a cup of tea. Yeah. We, we can't sit down and talk to someone without having a cup of tea. It solves the Or a cup problems. of coffee or whatever. Or or pint, depending on where you are. But. Yeah. So this is, is this a day off for you? This is not a day off for me, no. Is there days off? Oh, yes, there's, there there are days off. Yes, of course, there are days off um, occasionally. Because I, I, I would be, intre- I mean, I've only ever seen you in a suit. Ah, because no. I see you on TV and I feel, I, I was like, is this a day off? Maybe your day off is just not the tie. No, I just didn't put down. the tie on this morning, but I've got the tie in the car with the with the jacket to put back on. I mean, I, I could have come on a hoodie. I had a hoodie on this morning. Um, yeah. I'm out walking quite a lot at the minute, so I go out walking. Hood, hood up on. or hood down? No, oh, no, no, hood up. Hood up, <laughs> yes. hat on, snood up, look, look, look like a gangster. Hood and snood? Yeah, yeah hood and snood. So that's just, you're oh, just yeah. All you see is the eyes, yeah. All you see is the eyes. I frighten people. I actually say good morning to people and they, they, they look at me, so I have to drop the snood yeah. sometimes. Say, hello. Through their letterbox. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you fully back at work? Because I, I, I want to I wanna chat about, you mentioned your health condition. Um, you had a, a, another, your second kidney transplant? I did indeed. I am very, although I, Stephen, I look very educated. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay. People look at me and go, "That guy has been pro- Oxford, Cambridge, around the block." Yes. Well, not ar- no, not around the block. <laughs> people think <laughs> uh, people think I'm a scholar. Really? E- yes. I went to Belfast Med, but people look at me and go, "That guy knows a thing or two. Okay. And if um, you say so. No, m- m- my <laughs> HND speak for themselves, <laughs> but I I don't know anything about transplants, but. I was well. I mean, I mean, I get the idea. I get the logic of what they're trying to do, but um, I remember like years and years before I met you. I remember because my dad was a motorbike racer. My uncle was a motorbike racer. My uncle knew you, Colin Todd. Yes, just from, yeah. just from you covering all the races and that kind of thing. And this is a long way around this story, but I remember my two talents whenever I was a child were number one was catching grapes in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right green green or purple very good whatever height you throw it to I can catch it Petty we didn't have some well I mean it's it's an insert maybe yeah. we can do we can go get <laughs> go to the fruit shop at the break and um, my other talent was doing doing an impression of you <laughs> yeah no I've heard it which is a niche talent but honestly no one's no one's coming close <laughs> to my Stephen Watson impression I think it's pretty good actually and, you know what? That I was a lonely child growing up because yeah. how did I figure out I could do it? Yeah, I'm, that's worrying. It is worrying. Very worrying. And I remember being taken to a race, and you were walking around the paddock. I think you had the the camera crew with you, and my uncle brought me over to you. <laughs> I, I, you probably don't remember this, do you? I don't actually remember this. No. And um, he said, do, "Do your do your impression." Now, you're, to be fair, you were working at the time. <laughs> I think you might have been on camera, and I did that for you. And then I remember not long after that. Um, reading about or hearing about your first kidney transplant mm. and then you had one like was it last year i had one four months ago yesterday so i have a lot of questions because i don't know anything about i know i know what they're trying to do save your life yes <laughs> and they're trying to take an organ from someone else correct and put it in you so wh- why in the first place if you know what i'm asking did you need to have a kidney transplant when I was 17 or 18, I went to give blood, the blood transfusion unit. Uh, they found out I was a bit anemic, so they couldn't take my blood, so I had to go and get it checked out. Which oh. anemic is what, low, low iron? Yes, low, 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 blood, low blood count. Um, so I went and got it checked out after a, you know, a couple of weeks of saying, look, we can't take your blood, to find out that actually it wasn't anything to do with my blood. It was actually to do with that I had kidney problems. So quickly, I, I, I realized they realized that both of my kidneys actually weren't formed properly at birth and they were deteriorating. Now, back then, when I was a teenager, I really didn't feel unwell. I didn't think I felt unwell. Right. My mom just thought I was a lazy student, sleeping the clock round, you know, put the put the three bar fire on, pretend to do your revision, but fall asleep. Right. So that but basically it's because I needed a new kidney. And, and after I had the first kidney transplant, which I got from my dad um, 30 years ago this month, 
oh, well. I felt unbelievably different. And I realized looking back that I was so lacking in energy and didn't feel well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That, it, it, not to that scale, but I've talked on the podcast before, so I have I've Crohn's disease. Yeah. I had a thing after, um, after having a really bad virus, after I got out of hospital for about a year, maybe, maybe between 10 months and 12 months, I felt like I had a hangover. I just, str- like, yeah, lethargic, exactly. tired. But it wasn't until I felt better that I realized how bad I had felt before. Exactly, exactly the same. But at me. the time, I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea. No, and I, I, mean, I, I used to play a lot of golf, obviously, and I was always lagging behind my friends a little. I got to the 14th or 15th hole, and I was always feeling exhausted. We played at Bally Castle Golf Club. I was going a big hill walking yes. up to the caravan park where we stayed. I was always knackered walking back up there, looking back. But once I had the transplant, and live donation at that time was quite was quite new. So for me to get the kidney from my dad as a live donor was a kind of a, a new thing back then. So before that, would they need to have like a body essentially? A, the, a deceased, to a do deceased donor program. Right. I mean, a deceased donor. And the deceased donor program still is very, very important that people yeah. leave their organs after they die and save a lot of people's lives. But now, with especially within the last 10 or 15 years, the live donation program has completely and utterly revolutionized transplantation. So if they did, say, 30 transplants a year, um, normally, now they're doing up over 100, perhaps 130 transplants a year because of the live oh, donation okay. scheme. So when when your dad gave you the kidney, how like did everyone in your family like attest or straight away was your dad like... I didn't know anything about it, to be honest. And I was up having checks in the hospital and I met my mum and dad by chance in the hospital. And I said, what, what are you doing here? So when my dad first said, well, look, I've been tested to give you a kidney, I said a flat no, absolutely no way. I couldn't put you through it. And eventually he sort of sat me down and said, look, if you don't take my kidney, when another one does become available for you, you're going to deny somebody else the chance of of having their life saved. So I said, OK, um, that kind of put me in my place. And I thought, yes, that I will accept, accept the kidney. So it was a tough time for my family, obviously, because, yeah. you know, my dad and I were both in the hospital at the same time. But uh, that kidney lasted me uh, the guts of almost 30 years and... Um, it was only in, in recent times that it actually started to deteriorate and fail. Is is there, when, when you actually get that kidney transplant, do, how long before they know, like, yeah, everything's fine? Oh, I mean, almost immediately. They'll know if the kidney is taken or not. But within the first three to six months are the kind of crucial period because your immune system is so low to basically fool your body that the kidney's part of you and not somebody else. Uh, then you can pick up a lot of infection. There's still a risk of rejection. Um, but touch wood, say I've had my new one for, for four months now and I'm and I'm feeling great. Do you know who your new one came from? I don't know. I just know it was an anonymous donor. Um, I know he was from Northern Ireland. Uh, and that's kind of... Stephen, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 he was older than you. He was older than you. Um, but as I said, the, the live donation program, so it used to be that um, you could really only accept the kidney from, say, you know, your husband or wife or your mum or your yeah. dad. Not, not really from a friend. But now the way the program works is if you say you'll give me a kidney, I'll line you up for my next one if I ever need one. <laughs> yeah. But if you say you can give me a kidney and you don't match me, yeah. I can put you in the kidney sharing pool. And you will never donate until I get a kidney out of the pool. So on this occasion, I had an anonymous donor who I put in the pool. And then that person ended up donating to someone else. And I got a kidney from out of the pool. So that's, that's I'm just picturing a load of really nice people <laughs> in, a, in a swimming pool. <laughs> not that, not that kind of pool, but uh, it's, so, a, it's a UK wide sharing but that, scheme. But that's... Uh, Amazing that there are people who are just up for giving their it, organs. Listen, it's incredible. We, we we made a documentary last year about to celebrate fifty yeah, years yeah. of the renal unit in Northern Ireland, and and um, I obviously then was persuaded to do an interview with with Stephen Nolan on his TV program, uh, which I was very reticent about. I have to say because I didn't really want to highlight my own situation. But I was able to go in and tell the story about the live donation scheme. And off the back of those two things, 170 odd people came forward to donate kidneys to strangers, yeah. not 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 to me, to strangers. And because of that program, they will now, probably by the end of February or March, uh, have completed 25 kidney transplants from people who are donating to strangers, which it absolutely blew me away. I mean, I was in having my kidney transplant this time. I met a man on the ward who introduced himself to me. His name was Brian. And he said, I just want you to know I've donated a kidney. I said, oh, that's amazing. He said, a couple of days ago. I said, incredible. He said, no, but I want to tell you why. He said, because... I saw your program. I saw your interview, and you inspired me to do it, well, which I was completely. Amazing, oh, right? listen, I was I was very emotional about it. I, I mean, if, if it made a difference to one person's life, yeah, then it was worth doing. I think. Well, I think that was. Um, I saw that Nolan interview, and yeah, it was very clear that it wasn't the, 
you want to talk about yourself? No, I didn't want to be seen that I'm I'm going out no. trying to ask for a for a kidney. I wanted the kind of everybody who needs a kidney transplant yeah, to because try and highlight the scheme. Like I, I don't I don't think I would have that modesty. Like if I <laughs> if I had got a second kidney, I'm I'm on Nolan with I need a cape one. on. I need yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 asking for a national day, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean I, I saw the documentary at the time as well and the the whole idea of organ donation always takes me back to my auntie Sandra, who's who's passed away now. But whenever she was um, signed up to become an organ donor, so she she knew that she was coming to the end of her life, and she wanted to to sign up to to be an organ donor. And she was filling out the form, and she was like, "Yes, you know, happy." To, they were going through the checklist mm-hmm. of what you'd be happy to give, and she was like, "Yes, everything. Yes, fine, no problem." Eyes. No, she's I, like, I, see, I was the same. Not I was the same. I'm totally the same. But not anymore. I would. I wouldn't care now. But I, <laughs> when I first signed I, the card, I was the same. I no. I don't see the logic in that because, like, this is maybe a notion that, you know, if people believe in an afterlife, that they would like to have their eyes. <laughs> but what afterlife is it where you don't need anything else inside? <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. I, I, I don't know what it is. I remember once we were making a, a, a documentary uh, about a rugby player and we were filming his cruciate ligament operation. It was Jeremy Davis and the, the, the British Lions and Irish rugby player. And I remember having to come out, I, I had to come out of the operating theatre, I couldn't watch anymore, it was too brutal for me. And I met right. one of the surgeons and he said, oh, listen, he said, I, I'm, I'm an eye surgeon. And he said, believe me, all the students that come in here, if I have 15 of them, two of them will be standing the first time I operate in an eye. There's just something about eyes. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's, even putting eye, oh, putting eye drops in. No. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I definitely can't watch people put <laughs> eye drops in. Um, but yeah, I thought the the, the program was, was amazing and, and people like, I mean, I don't know anything about it. I mean, Big Mike will know absolutely nothing <laughs> about transplants either. But I think for for people like me as well that have like no knowledge of that, um. It, it does make you way more interested in, in being an organ donor. Yeah, well, I I just hope by highlighting it, that especially the live donation scheme, that it would make people sit up and realise, look, you, you only need one kidney to live. You don't need two. So if there are people out there who would consider actually walking into the city hospital and donating a kidney, yes, it's a big decision. It's not anywhere as near big big an operation as it used to be. And my da- I mean, my dad was opened up basically 180 degrees the whole way around to take the kidney out. Oh, it's uh, not like that anymore. They take them out by keyhole. It's a fairly straightforward operation you're only in hospital a couple of days you know six to eight weeks recovery and you're absolutely absolutely how, fine how, how big is it like compared to a fruit oh i mean it depends a kidney could be maybe the size of a large orange but then there was a there was a, a man in hospital who had polycystic kidneys had a problem when i was in hospital and one of his kidneys was three or four kgs to be taken out oh right so but that's that's obviously abnormal but yeah they're probably the size of a the size of a large orange, something like that. But you, so the, I mean, the first time you needed a kidney, what was the difference in um, how much you needed one the second time? Because exactly, exactly the same. Exactly, I mean, exactly the same. The first time, I only had dialysis for a short time to get me ready for the operation, and then, then obviously I had the the the, the, the kidney from my dad. Uh, second time, my kidney started going downhill, so it was only operating sort of five or six percent. So I had to obviously had dialysis, which I had for eighteen months. To and keep, you're still to keep work, going. still working. I them. was determined that even though I wasn't feeling the best, that I was just going to work completely the whole way through. So I had four five-hour sessions of dialysis a week: Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday mornings, early, and then went into work after that. But then I was away, I, <laughs> I was away working quite a lot as well. So I, I mean, I was determined I wasn't going to miss the Masters, which is the greatest sporting right, in the world. Right. Uh, so I had two sessions of dialysis in America. I had two sessions at the Ryder Cup. I had two sessions at the Open in Scotland. I had it in the Isle of Man. I had it in Portugal. Um, I had it anywhere I could get it. I would take it. I mean, if I have a cold, I'm taking a month off. Yeah. I'm, I'm going no, no. for the quarantine. <laughs> I, you know? I, I was determined that I wasn't going to, and I didn't. I didn't miss any. Any. I didn't miss a day's work when I was on dialysis. Uh, but I realise that's not possible for everybody. Yeah. You but know. do you think that has an effect overall on your body and every? You know, if you do go right, I'm just getting on with this. Do you think your body almost like picks up on that and goes? I think your mind does. Yeah. Um, I think it probably keeps. It certainly kept me. It kept me going. I, I couldn't have sat in the house and, you know, going for five hours of dialysis and then go home and lie down for another five hours. Yeah. That, that's just not me. I wanted to keep going and prove that you can still on dialysis, not, I wouldn't call it a normal life, but you could still lead a healthy life and still still do your, do, your, do your job. When you did the interview on Nolan, am I right in saying you, at that point, you didn't know if uh, had you got the no, I, no, I was on dialysis at that point. I, I was doing the so, dialysis so at that point. So you weren't sure that no, you I, wasn't, I, I, I wasn't sure. I only found out... Um, 
probably just before last summer that I was that they'd found a match for me and it was a it was a one in a million kidney because normally you have to have the same blood group um, and obviously the tissue typing has to be the same um, but this kidney wasn't the same blood group as me but they were able to treat me and they, they give you a thing called plasma exchange it sounds fairly gruesome but it's not really they, it's, they, they basically take your blood out of your body take right. the plasma out of the blood take the antibodies out of the plasma put the plasma back in your blood and then your antibodies are low enough to accept st- the transplant you started that with basically <laughs> I mean when you said plasma exchange I thought you bring your TV in yeah. and you get a new one back <laughs> you know yeah. um, but you like what would what would I ha- another if you had to wait another month? I'd, I'd, another I'd been on months. dialysis. I mean, I could have stayed on dialysis probably for. I, I would imagine you could stay on it for ten years if you really, really had to. Oh, I okay. was on it for you know eighteen, nineteen months, something. Is like that, that doing you damage when you're on that? It's not doing you the world of good. I mean, your your kidneys are giving you dialysis twenty four hours a day. I was only getting five hours dialysis. Um, you know, every every other day basically. Oh, okay. So that's kind of that kind of how. It, so no, it's not great. It's not great that your blood's taken out of your body, put into a machine, cleaned and put back in again. So you don't want to be doing that all the time i realize there are people who are not eligible for a transplant so dialysis is going to keep them alive for as long as they're as long as they're ah, okay. here um so you hear about all, all this stuff but i, I didn't, don't think about the actual reality of yeah it. so some people are eligible for a transplant and some people aren't because some people aren't well enough obviously to have, right. to have the operation um but thankfully i was the dialysis kept me going i was i was well enough to have a accept the kidney so but i'd say I, i'm i'm o negative blood group but i got a b negative kidney which is incredible right i mean I, I did ask them how did they find out that they can actually give different blood group kidneys because like you can't just give take it a, a chance <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and they said japan um, because japan don't believe in leaving your organs when you die they're all about live transplantation so they did one by accident and they found out that it worked. And right. then they went, why did that work? I mean, yeah, I that's know. such a great yeah. thing, but that, that doctor <laughs> yeah, needs to act. Yeah, I, know, I know. But anyway, that's, I mean, it's opened up a, you know, a whole new avenue for, for completing successful transplants, which is great. Um, yeah, I mean, God, I guess you'd have to just continue to work if you can to sort of stop yeah and it might have come to it might have come to the the, the stage where you you know you you couldn't you couldn't have you know you could you had it might have to have stopped working um but it kept it kept me going which was which was great so without getting too deep do you did you have to think about things like were you when you were doing dialysis and you were going on the journey did you think it's going to be grand, you know, everything's going to be fine. I or? did, I, I, I did, I had, great, I had great faith in the, I mean, the Belfast City Hospital are world leaders in transplantation, without a shadow of a doubt. They do more live transplants per head of population than anywhere else in the world. And, and I mean, Northern Ireland are making headlines in that field ac- across the world. What they've done recently because of this, um, the amount of altruistic donors that have come forward, I mean, i.e. donating to strangers, that's making waves in, in transplantation across the UK because other units are saying, how are you doing so many of these altruistic you know, donors? And they, they are amazing people up there. So I, I actually always put my faith in them that they would get me a kidney. I, I didn't really think about um, the mortality of it all yeah. until I probably went on the Nolan show and um, he asked the, sur- <laughs> the, the surgeon who was on there how long he got to live. And he went, oh, probably another 10 years. I was thinking he doesn't get a kidney. So that, <laughs> that's that, life. <laughs> yeah. So I hadn't actually thought about it up to that point, but I thought about it then. Um, but I, I look, I, because I'd had 30 years of a successful transplant, I never forgot I had a kidney transplant during that time. But, you know, I lived life to the full. Yeah, you yeah. Know. Sorry to interrupt the podcast, Sippers, but I have a very, very quick sponsor message. Tea With Me is sponsored by Limelight Belfast, the most famous venue for live music and club nights in the country. Coming up, Sigala, example. I've never been afraid of the highest highs. So if he's not available, I can do it. Gabrielle Applin, Magnum Inhaler, JC Stewart, plus many more with a student-friendly night. They also have club nights five nights a week, so check out Limelight Belfast for more. And if you're interested in sponsoring the Tea With Me podcast, if you're a tea company, if you make finger skateboards, if if you make custard, get in touch with us and you too can be a sponsor of what has been described as fine by the podcast world. Back to the podcast. After you know, after I have my first transplant, you won't remember this place, but maybe some people listening to this mm-hmm. will. The Crescent. Do you ever remember the Crescent? No. Oh, what a not. what a bar nightclub that was. Where San, was it? In Sandy Row. Oh, what a place! It was the student hangout, and th- just around the corner was Spuds. You ever go to? So you've been to Spuds? My uh, uh, an old friend of mine from school, his ma owned Spuds. Oh, what a place! So most trap yes, burger. Mouse I've trap been burger. to Spuds. Oh, brilliant. and I didn't put my hand in my pocket. Oh, I love it. So we used to go to the Crescent, and believe me, I enjoyed myself even with what, my kidney what transplant. Is, what is the Crescent? It was, now? It was, 
It's housing. It's it's now just apartments. I think it was a what a place. So all the students were heading headed for Sandy Road. There is nowhere in Belfast like the Crescent anymore. It was the place to go. And could and know, then around the corner for spots. Could everyone have gone to the yeah, Crescent every, back in those days? Everyone, if you know, ev- I mean. everyone could go to. Yeah, everyone could go. It was it was the place to go. So I lived life to the full, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I went yeah. out. You know, I liked the I liked the pint of Guinness, vodka Red Bull. You know, I. <laughs> Not together, no. but I enjoyed myself. Yeah, is what, yeah, I'm yeah. Say, is what I'm saying. And I lived life to the full. I played a lot of sport. I had a completely normal life, but I never forgot I had a transplant because I wanted to look after it, and I looked after it because it was my dad's, and I looked after it for th- for thirty years. I remember we we filmed we were filming some for BBC Northern Ireland up at Port Rush. Is that where we did that? Yes, from? no Port Stewart. Port Stewart, and um, and the idea was I would drive people to the driving range, like celebrities and people playing in the pro am, and interview them as we went. <laughs> And you and I went out and it was great. And I remember I had like some food and they were like, offer people food when they get in. And I was like, here, Stephen, do you want a banana? And you're like, no, <laughs> I'll, 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 die, I'll die if I have this. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite, but um, right. because when I was on dialysis, I'm on a low potassium diet, really restrictive diet uh, and, and on a fluid restriction. So I was only on 1500 mil a day. Now, for somebody who used to drink seven and probably does now drink six, seven, eight liters a day, the fluid restriction absolutely killed me. You drink eight liters a day. Oh, I well six anyway. I drink six liters a day. No. Of what? W- water. You know, water, fluid. Whatever. Is it not if you drink uh, a gallon of water, you you die? No, 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 no. You can drink. You, you can. I mean, have you heard that as well? No, no, I've never heard that. You won't drink. You, you, I was informed by a very reliable source when I was younger. I think I was about six when I heard this. The guy telling me. <laughs> Was at least eight. Well, that might have been Chinese water torture or something back yeah, in, back in the day. But Strand um, Primary School, yeah. it was rife. <laughs> so when I was on that dialysis, I only had fifteen hundred mils, so I wasn't drinking the eight or ten cups of tea a day. It was like really, really limited, and that and I was on ten pear pick and porkies and poly pineapples a day. You know, because they're only sixty or seventy mil. So what a diet they were. Good. Yeah, that's I lived on lollipops <laughs> and I didn't eat anything. So and obviously there was no alcohol involved. And to be honest, I haven't had any alcohol since my new transplant, and I probably won't ever again, uh, just because I've kind of gone off it now. Yeah, it's weird. I like to think you know for to get over the the mental side of eating eight eight to ten pair of pig and porkies a day. You, cl- you used to change it up with a knife, like even going at it with a knife and fork sometimes. No, 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 no. no. Dicing it, no. no. And rocket rocket lollies, great. I mean, right. eat rocket lollies for a pound. Well, where would you get it? Great. Absolutely. So and most I, I, people, the I mean, that's most people are would buy one of those for the summer. <laughs> you know that that much? No, I buy a day per day. That's incredible. And every uh, yeah, I mean, every sporting event I went to, people knew I liked lollipops, so they would like buy me lollipops, get them in the <laughs> freezer. And since I've had my transplant, I have not had one lollipop. I was keeping deal farm in business. Well, I, I, just because you had so many, or yeah, will bring you back. To... Oh, I mean, I was eating genu- genuinely. This sounds Hold ridiculous. On, I missed, no, this is this is sort of exclusive. <laughs> I want. I, me with it. I was eating without a shadow of a doubt. Oh no, seventy lollipops a week. <laughs> <laughs> 60 anyway that's Six, way 60. too many Six, that's 60 way anyway. too many so multiply 60 lollipops a week times uh, 18 months that's that's how many lollipops I was eating yeah I know I mean if the Sunday world don't get hold of this they're missing a trip. and not one since their profits must have plummeted what's an ice lolly exclusive no, no never I don't want to look at another one ever again so what are you limited on your diet now like- no no, 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 not now. I'm back. If I can eat as freely as I want. See, I am, but I don't know. I think I might be able to still eat freely, but I'm just in the zone with what I do. Fun. I still haven't had bananas. I'm still funny. My potassium, I still watch it because I don't want it to creep up. And and other things. Yeah, I check my results and make sure I want to. I don't want to put. Obviously, after a transplant, you can put on a lot of weight because right. you're on steroids, and I don't want to do. I don't want to do that. So I am managing my diet pretty well. I love a ham and cheese toasty. Ham and cheese toasty. Well, I couldn't eat those for three, like three and a half years. Yeah. So I love a ham and cheese toasty now. I couldn't ham- eat cheese. You know, couldn't eat processed food. Couldn't eat fast food. Do you put crisps on the side. I ha- yeah. No, no, I don't. But I, I like. I haven't. I've actually only had a couple of packs of crisps since my transplant. I kind of have gone off them as well. But potato, cheese, and onion. Honestly, I think the older you get, the more distant you get from crisps. I know, but I lo- used to love a pack of potato, cheese, and onion. Yeah. Crisp sandwich. Oh, class. Well, here's a, back in back in 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 the day at school. I would have got ham and cheese sandwich, ham, grated cheese. Oh, I like that. On the side, I would have got a pepper chip. I would have put a few of the pepper chips into it. That's rotten. And some tato prawn cocktail. That's rotten. That is rotten. It, that, honestly, that is rotten. don't knock it until you've tried it. No, I'm not the one to try it. I mean, it, it cost 12 quid to put it all yeah. together, but it was, it was worth it. Try a ham, cheese, sweet corn toasted sandwich with red sauce or mayonnaise. That's the business. No, not red sauce. Oh, yeah, red sauce. No, because if you're... Or if, mayonnaise. 
Nah. I couldn't. I haven't been able to eat red sauce, brown sauce, say cheese. Very limited on vegetables. Um, couldn't eat like white rice out of a Chinese restaurant, for example. I mean, I, I could tell you what I could eat rather than what I couldn't eat. So now my diet's been opened back up again. It's fantastic. I can eat whatever I want. That's great. I mean, I remember when I was in hospital, um, the, I got the Crohn's diagnosis, but they weren't fully sure. I have, a, I have, I have a weird body. <laughs> I mean, I've got like weird hands, like loose shape. I think like I have weird. My thumbs a weird shape, and this is the same internally as well. Nice. I have some weird things. So they. They x-rayed me and they came back to me. I was only in hospital a couple of days and I'd never been in hospital for anything before mm. overnight. And they, they said, look, we've looked at your spleen here and you have, it's distur- disturbing. Like people, like consultants were, you know, like white. And um, they Did said, take it out? no, they didn't take it out mm. because they, they said to me because of your spleen and because of what else is going on, you're looking at maybe a three, I think they said to me a three or four months stay in hospital. Nice. Came back to me. the food. Came, no, it wasn't good. <laughs> came back to me a couple of days later, said, look, we've figured out that you, and this is the consultant's word, we figured out your spleen is just a bit weird, so mm-hmm. you're now free to leave. So, I don't know why I started saying this, but I just want to let you know that my spleen is not great. Oh, that this is what it was. I was reacting badly without knowing that the dairy, right? So I would have, mm-hmm. I would have dairy, and then I would need to go to a different room. If you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, but I didn't know this, so I want, and I'd lost so much weight, I just wanted to, uh, like, build myself back up again. So everybody was like, milkshakes are the way to go, loads of calories, easy Great. to drink. People were bringing me big banana milkshakes, uh, and it was just... You can't you can't drink them? No. I was drinking them, but I was... Make, but you, could you make them with oat milk? Probably could now, yeah. But they'd be stinking. <laughs> but I, and I haven't had, <laughs> but, like... I don't miss milk as much as I thought I would. In only tea. in tea. Only in tea. Almond, almond milk and no, tea. No, I don't like almond milk and tea. I tried it. Didn't didn't do it for me. See, and I'm not. Mike here likes oat. Uh, oat milk. He's an oat, oat man. Oat yeah. milk. Yeah, I tried it too, but not on cornflakes. I can toggle it in tea, but not on plate of cornflakes. That's what killed me. I live on cereal and so ham and cheese toasted sandwiches, and both those things were out the window when I was on the diet. When I was on the diet, you see, crunchy nut cornflakes couldn't have them. Couldn't yeah. have nuts. The milk was limited. Nightmare. Only allowed hundred ml of milk a day. I mean, if if kept if, it for tea. If there's a Better advert for taking care of your kidneys. It's the fact that cereal's out the window, yeah. tea's oh, out the window. See, you're on but if you like lollies... Oh, yeah, if you like lollies, get on get on the lolly. Get involved. I'll probably end up with diabetes, but I mean, <laughs> you, <laughs> the kidney's okay. <laughs> you, you and I were on the same flight going back from That's right. Switzerland, do you remember? Yes, I do, yeah. After another Ireland match. Yeah. And we are just chatting about a load of different things. And then we got talking about the Smiths. Oh, and and you were, you were talking Smith. about the Smiths. You, you, you said you said do you, do you like the Smiths? And I said, yeah. I mean, I don't know a load of their songs, mm-hmm. but yeah. And then I can't remember who I was talking to in Radio Ulster months later. I think on my radio show we played the Smiths, Great. and Owen McFadden, my producer, said, Stephen Watson never spoke to you about the Smiths. <laughs> and I said, yes. On a flight coming home from Switzerland, he asked me if I like the Smiths, and I said, does he is he really into them? And he went, yes. Oh yes. He really is. Oh, yeah. Morrissey's got a new album out at the minute. Well, it's coming out in March. Do you know that Morrissey did like a tour of, and I swear to God, this is true, Northern Irish Leisure Centres? Yes, and I was at them all. <laughs> Oma Leisure Centre. He played, it's not a It's not a, It's not not a. a leisure centre, but he played the Rialto in Derry, which is a very, very small venue. He played Oma Leisure Centre and, and a couple of others, and I was at every single one of them. What I like about that <laughs> is that the idea of playing a leisure centre is that there was probably like lads towards the end of the concert on his encore just with a five-a-side ball <laughs> waiting to go on, just peering through the glass. I mean, I heard that he did that because it's so cheap to rent the leisure centre. No, I don't think that was that was the reason. It's because he so. just does different things sometimes. I mean, this is somebody who like who headlined Glastonbury, yeah. who sold out um, the, the Orange Bowl quicker than the Beatles. Right. You know, he, he can play massive venues, but sometimes he just likes to... He's doing the leisure centre as soon he, as the girls finish him, but he's he on. He just likes to do a little, little smaller... smaller. I, I've seen Morrissey in concert at least ten times. At least 10. And you have a collection oh. of records, CDs. Yes. Do you have have, a, would you say you have every bit of music he's ever done? Oh, yes. Well, probably three times over. And maybe some stuff he doesn't even know he's no, done no, yet, no, but you've no, got def- it? Definitely not. But I have got every CD, every 7-inch single, every 12-inch single, um, every box set, every promo single. All the singles come out as a promo. There's one or two things that I don't have because they cost an ex- 
extortionate amount of money to actually buy them. Stephen, like, you've had a, two kidney transplants. I know, I know, but the negative, the negative single, there's only a, there's only a very limited amount of, of the Smith very first single, hand and glove, is probably about five grand. So I don't Steve. want it that much because I've got. Uh, you, don't, Get it. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yes. Yeah, they don't come up for sale very often. Get it. But I have probably like I've got hundreds of CDs, hundreds of seven-inch records, hundreds of albums. I, mean, I have hundreds of stuff, and I love it. I and want, memorabilia and everything. I want you to complete the collection. I mean, if it's five I know, grand, I mean we're, we live in Northern Ireland. You'll know a fella who can get it for like eighty quid. I know, but I thought my collection was amazing until <laughs> this sounds this sounds sad. But I was on a website for <laughs> Morrissey Collectors. It is, and, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and this guy like take one of his singles for example, Sweet Heb was his first yeah. single. This guy's got the twelve-inch and seven inch from every single country you know i'm i'm not that obsessive i just level. want every sleeve and every version so i've got all the cassettes albums on, on every single format on every format and there was a couple i actually had a leak in the house once and it leaked into the box of the morrissey and smith's collection and it wrecked like quite a lot of the records so i had to go re- out and rebuy them. the again. universe might have been trying <laughs> to tell you something <laughs> but listen i am i am more passionate about morrissey and the smiths than probably even sport which I am so passionate about. So I, I'm a kind of the same for with, you. I'm the same with Bewitched. Bewitched? Yeah, I'd have all their all their same. Is, that a, is, that, is that a band or a C'est la vie? Is that a band or a program? Is there not a program Bewitched? Yeah, there is. But Bewitched were okay, an Irish trio of sisters. Oh, I've you never, know? never heard of them. Say you will, say you won't, say oh, you'll do yeah, what yeah, I yeah, don't. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, did Morrissey get involved there recently? Is he? He's, he's been. He's look, polar, I, I, he's polarizing. Right? Yes, he's he's got himself in a whole lot of bother. Um, I don't really. I don't really get involved in his politics and the things that he says. I just like the music. Um, I like the man. I like the music, but I don't get involved in all of. Like I didn't turn a vegetarian because he because of meat is murder, and all of that that goes with it. But I just think you're his eating mu- too many purple <laughs> <boards. laughs> Even his, like his music is amazing. I love the Smiths. His new album out. I am not a dog on a chain, which is coming out very soon. I mean, there's already been three three singles released off that, and as soon as they're downloaded, I was out walking the other night. I listened to the new single about ten times when I was. When I, was I am sad when it comes to Morrissey and the Smiths, but he's amazing. I like there is a light that never goes oh, out. Oh, what a song! I like Last of the International Playboys. Love that famous song. International Playboys. Last of the International Playboys. That's a phenomenal song. Yeah, my friend actually once Nigel McAlpine said, "This is over a few drinks. Could I name a hundred Morrissey songs in a minute, or Morrissey or Smith songs?" Got to about ninety eight. It was impressive, and I know I'm not going to try. I'm not, no, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try it again now, Stephen. No, 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 I'm not going to try it again now. Okay, <laughs> but it was pretty good, and it, you'd need a, you'd need drink involved for that. But it was, yeah, I I I love Morrissey and the Smiths, love it. It was their whenever you were you were sort of going through everything, whenever you you were doing the long hours on dialysis and all that kind of thing. Was there what like? Do you just like listening to the music, or do you go? Do you connect the music to like? Do you know what I mean? Have you have you got a song in your head where you go? That's sometimes what I, I just stick that on. Everything's so, fine. Yeah, sometimes. So, sometimes. I mean, the very first Smith song that I liked, and I it was William. It was really nothing. That was just the first song I ever heard. I came to the Smiths after they'd broken up. I, I you know I never got a chance to see the Smiths in concert. So I I do like that song. That sort of takes me back to the day. But I have to say, well, in hospital, I just downloaded on Spotify the complete. Morrissey and Smith's collection and just listen to it solidly. I mean, some people probably thought that would put you in an early grave, but um, I, I just, I loved it. I mean, listen to other stuff. I mean, listen to a lot of other stuff as well. Not so much current stuff. Morrissey Tribute Act. Yes. Yeah. Smith's <laughs> Tribute. Yeah, these charming men. Well, look, yeah. you never got to see the Smith's live. No, I'd, Stephen, get ready. Because oh, <laughs> they're here. It would, be, it would be my, I would love to meet Morrissey. I've never met, they say don't meet your heroes, but I have met a couple of them previously, like St. George Best, Joy Dunlop. Um, Ollie Campbell was a rugby player. Yeah, you, you, you naturally. Um, so I would, I would like to meet meet Morrissey. I mean, I feel like you, I feel like it's 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 achievable. Well, I was. Is, is he elusive? Well, there was once he was on the one show at one point, which was quite an odd thing for him to do. Yeah. And Christine Blakely, who obviously knows, she said, "You want to come over?" And I was thinking about it, and then I thought, "No, you'd just be like." A spare one of those at a wedding, you know. So I thought oh, you, you got to do it though. I know at some at some point I'd like I'd like I'd like. I mean, it, genuinely, his music has played a big part in my in my life. Yeah. I mean, I've listened to it my whole my whole life. I love it. when a Marcy album or is coming out. I actually genuinely get excited. I'm probably one of the few. Yeah, but you I, and him, I I, I, I love it. I love well, it. He probably and doesn't. When I was in hospital, I actually bought a load of Smiths t-shirts for you know people buy pajamas. I bought Smiths and Marcy t-shirts. And wore those when I was in the hospital. So I like that. <laughs> I like that. I'm kind of nowhere near the same. I think I arrived at the Rolling Stones. I've always liked the old Rolling Stones song. 
But as I've got a wee bit older, I've started to listen to as much Rolling Stones as I can. I yeah, mean, I we're not talking a little. collection. We're not talking you, a collection. But I'll, I'll, I'll start. You think so? <laughs> yeah, I think it might. I want. I, I really think you should buy that five grand piece that you're missing. And we can get it cheap. We'll get it cheaper. Someday. We'll get it cheaper. Someday. Might get it a bit cheaper than that. Um, so, I want to finish by talking about this. I, this might be terrible to say, I think I'm an organ donor. But I am not 100% sure. You think you are? I have filled out things before. On your driving license? Yes. Then you probably are. Does that make me, is there, should I check, is there a way I can check it? Is there something I can? Yes, you can go onto the organ donor register online and try and see if you, you know, if, if you're registered online. I mean, oh. I, they have, I mean, England, Scotland, Wales um, have a different scheme than we have in Northern Ireland, as far as I'm aware. They've got an opt out as opposed to an opt in scheme, oh, okay. which I hope they do bring into Northern yeah, Ireland yeah. now that we've finally got the government back up and running. It, it's important, but it's not as important as the live donation program. I yes. prefer to spend my time talking to educate people. That, you know, you can you don't have to die to save somebody's life. You can save somebody's life while you're while you're still on the planet. Um, but it is it is very important. The organ donor program is very very important. The deceased program is very very there's, important, and I, mean, I would encourage everyone to. There's probably a lot it. of people like me that, you know, kind of think they are like the idea of it, but maybe you you know. I'll, I'll do that at some point you put it off yeah. whatever so today I'm going to check it yes and, e- sure and even on. still if you're on it and you unfortunately passed away they still have to check with your family yes. that, that, that that they want you to donate yeah. um, but if you've signed the register then it makes the conversation a whole lot easier I, I once actually promoted the organ donor register and I found this photo the other day no good for a podcast but I will show you afterwards of me on the back of a bus promoting organ donation uh, yeah and the suit that I was wearing that day is horrific. <laughs> <laughs> Pinstripe, no? Oh, no, it's brown. Oh, even it's, worse. It, it's a brown suit. It's not good. Big Mike, you're an organ donor? Yeah. yeah. Everything. Eyes included. Eyes good. as well. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, the full, I'm, eyes. I'm the full heap now, although I couldn't donate my kidneys, even though I've got four. Yes. Only one of them works. Well, like your Morrissey collection, <laughs> it's a great collection. I, I, I have decided who I'm going to leave that to. You know, that's going to have to go to a museum of some description. Yes, I think De- so. Without a shadow of a doubt. I think so. Stephen, thank you so much for thank you. coming on the podcast. Thanks really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for giving me the time to um, talk about organ donation too. Yes. Um, the live organ donation, is there like a website for that? Or? Um, you can go on, yeah, Belfast City Hospital. Um, you can look up the, the, the live donation scheme there and register to be a, an, organ, an organ donor. And uh, you're one phone call away and uh, a few health checks away, blood tests away from donating an organ. All right, there we go. Thanks very much. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for having indeed. tea with me. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Drink. We'll drink cold tea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's freezing. <laughs> Sippers, that is this week's Tea With Me podcast. Thank you very much. to St- What a guy. Stephen Watson for coming on, highlighting the awareness needed for organ donation and especially live organ donation. So if you want to do a bit more reading about that, get on Google and do it. Don't be one of these people that posts up on Facebook going, how would I find out more about live organ donation? (laughs) Hey, you ever heard of Lycos? (laughs) Hey, you know Bing? Put it in, because some people might not want to use Google. And if you don't want, you've got Yahoo. You've got Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. He's a lot older now. He's, He's very slow now in his old age, Jeeves. But if you ask him, he will eventually get back to you. If you put a question into Jeeves now, 25 minutes before he gets back to you, but he will he will find it. He just takes his time. Uh, that's probably the person whose number you gave. Remember you just said to me, Big Mike there, can I pass on your number to someone? They're phoning me right now. Inconvenient. I, I literally said, uh, sorry, I missed you in film and Shane as we speak. Ah. So I don't. Do you know what? I, I don't it's know what fine. I've, it's just real life. It's fine. We'll take the call after. Yeah. But thank you very much for listening. Uh, I say, if you want to subscribe to the podcast, Tea With Me, you can do that. If you want to rate and review it on Apple Podcasts, that would be so sweet. That'd be that'd be swagged out. That'd be souped up. That would be asthmatic. If you want to give a wee five-star review and just say that you enjoy it, whatever you want to say, just be kind about my thumbs, okay? Thank you very much for listening. If you want the video version, it's on YouTube, audio, Tea With Me, everywhere, Apple Podcasts. I can't think of anywhere else, but it's there. And I've probably even left a voicemail there. And hey, don't like it when I get a voicemail. Don't like it. Don't like going into it. I've seen your missed call. I'll phone you back. Don't need the voicemail. Sometimes voicemail is good when the person goes, don't worry about phoning me back. I just need to pass on this message. And then you go, brilliant. 
but nine out of ten times, I don't like a voicemail. Okay, I do not. The only time voicemail is fun is when someone's pocket dialed you for 12 minutes and you get to listen into their life and go, I hope you make a mistake. But that's what it is. Thanks very much for listening to this week's Tears Me podcast. Thanks to Big Mike for standing over there, just being Big Mike. As we all know, he's called up by, in his own words, private people. <laughs> what? I would thank Dan, Dan Quick, but he is not here this week. So he will be getting zero thanks. I thank Dan Quick for this podcast as much as I thank Richard Blackwood for it. As much as I thank the ex-WWE wrestler, Viscera, <laughs> who has also contributed little to nothing to this week's podcast. Who else? Do, who else? Did Viscera do the Rolly Eye things as well? As yeah, he did it as well. Viscera was like a big fat black guy in, a, in like a PVC jacket. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, he did it. Mohawk? He had a mohawk, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you remember. Never forget Viscera. Shout out to my man Viscera, who's he'll be on the podcast next week. I don't know if he's dead. Is he dead? I mean, I feel like he could well be dead. Um, also, Ronnie Biggs, former train robber, has done as much as Dan for this episode of the podcast. I mean, Dan has his reasons. He's literally working. But at the same time, please respect the memory of Viscera, unless he's still alive, in which case, let's enjoy him while he's here. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you.